Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm out here behind the livestock barn and I'm working on trying to install some pasture fencing. So I'm wanting it, you know, fence in the back side of the barn behind the barn here first. It's just a small area. And then after that, I'm gonna move on and do the bigger area off to the side. But uh, we're gonna be fencing all this in with field fencing. We're gonna use sheep and goat field fencing and that's gonna be like a four inch square pattern in the fence. And I think that's gonna work out good for us because we got goats and we got chickens and we could eventually have some sheep and cows in here as well. So it's gonna be a multi-species fence. It's, uh, it's the same fence I used on the barnyard and it's kept the chickens and everything in pretty good. So um, the runs of fence that we'll be doing today or that we're gonna be running back here are pretty short runs. They're less than 150 feet. So I'm just gonna be putting in single H braces. You can see these two posts here behind me. This is one H brace here. And then I think I've got at least a couple more that I wanna to try to get done today. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark my post at 38 inches high. That's basically where my brace pin, where my brace is gonna be going across. So that may seem, so 38 inches here may seem low for a fence brace, but um, I've got these posts a little higher sticking out of the ground than I have previously. These are sticking out 56 inches. And um, the fence bracing, it, you know, it's eight feet across and you want that brace wire to be about a 30 degree angle. So really for eight foot, you only want about a, a three foot change in elevation to get that 30 degrees. And then the reason why my post is higher is because the way I'm gonna put my wire on here. I'm gonna put a barbed wire two inches off the bottom and then two inches above that will be my 48 inch goat and sheep fence. So that'll put my goat and sheep fence about this tall. And then I'm gonna put a strand of electric on top of that. That way, if I wanna do temporary electric fencing through the, uh, the pasture, I'll be able to clip onto that electric wire and run temporary fence. But that's the reason why my posts are set so high and that's the reason why I'm setting the brace at 38 inches. So we'll see what the width of the post here is at 38 inches and it's about 94 and a 16th. So we'll cut our brace down to that measurement. You may not like this saw, Scout. Told you you wouldn't like that saw. So I'm gonna drill a hole for my brace pin and it's gonna go slightly above center. I'm gonna go about three inches deep. So on my back brace, make sure I'm pointed straight at my post. I'm gonna drill another hole about three inches deep. So I'm not like a fencing expert or professional or anything. I am an amateur that have just read about it in different fencing manuals and instructions. And I'm just sharing what I'm doing. So I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. This is the way I'm doing it. So and on this uh, inside post, I'm gonna drill all the way through and try to get it nice and pointed at that other post. Well, I think I'm pretty happy with that hole. It's a uh, I got a mark on the other side and I'm only about a half inch low on the other side. So I was pretty, 
Pretty straight. All right, put my brace pin in that side. And see if we can get it, our brace onto the pin. Come on. There we go. All right, drive that in our hole. Okay. Really only need this brace pin to stick out, I don't know, an inch. So I'm gonna drive me a staple about two inches off the ground on this side. I'm gonna put it horizontal. So my brace wire is going to wrap around on this side. And I'm going to drop two staples in here. I'll try to drop two staples in there. The barbs are catching. There we go. So in the past when I've done brace wire, I've always done uh, number nine wire which is really heavy wire a little bit hard to work with to be honest with you it's just uh just so stiff i thought this time i would try some high tensile wire instead and see if i could get it to work better so this is 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire and i've got two loops around this and in the past I used a wire strainer as well to tighten it a ratchet strainer to tight to tighten it and um, I think this time I'm going to try using a gripple and see if it because uh, I can put several hundred pounds of force on a gripple and uh, see if I can make a, a brace wire that way so I'm going to slide my gripple on one end let me slide it on the other end. See if we can get this to work here. So if this works, these gripples are a lot cheaper than a ratchet strainer. So. Just tightening it up. Getting there. Got a little bit of sag in it. Okay. So I've got this tool set at 200 foot pounds. Let's see what happens. Oh boy, it, it popped. There it was. That's 200 pounds. That's good and good and tight. So if you get your brace wire tight enough, you should see a little void start to form here as this post is being pulled backwards by the brace wire. So this high tensile wire is a lot harder than other wire. I don't have the proper tools, so I'm just gonna use some bolt cutters for now so I don't damage any of my pliers. I've heard this is hard enough that you'll damage pliers with it.
Well, I think the uh, this brace wire actually turned out pretty good. I, I like the gripple in this instance. You can tighten that up again later and you can loosen it and take it off if you want to. And it is cheaper than a ratchet strainer. So I do think it'll work out good in this instance. So I've got two more braces that I want to do right here. This is one of them. And the other one is going to be back over there off the corner of the barnyard. These should go pretty quick. So let's go ahead and get done. Pretty good I think it looks pretty good so uh, I actually got one more brace that I can do today um, one of the post holes in that brace I just fought and fought it just did not want to get deep enough I poured water in it three times let it like sit overnight and it wasn't helping any uh, so it really didn't have to do with the ground being dry I don't think I think there was just so much rocks down in the bottom there was actually some pretty decent pieces of sandstone down there and I basically had to chip away with, at it with the manual post hole digger and just like, uh, you know, finally get it to the depth that way. So uh, in the bottom of that hole, when I put the dirt back in, it was really soupy, really wet and soupy from me pouring water in there. So I was wanting that post to settle for a few days, you know, and dry out and just let everything, the ground settle. But I think since it's a nice day, I'm going to go ahead and go over there. We'll go ahead and put the fence brace together. And, uh, but when I put it together, I probably won't torque down on this wire too much because I don't want to shift the post. So uh, I'll probably put everything together and then come back another day and really tighten down on it. So let's go ahead and head down to the other brace.
So I think I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy with the way the assembly of the fence braces went today. So the post holes have been terrible uh, drilling all these post holes. I've fought these for several days on some of these trying to get uh, the post holes dug. And, uh, but at least the fence bracing went fairly smoothly. So uh, this 12 and a half gauge high tensile wire. Um, that definitely was easier to do, mess with this, than it was the number nine wire. So I think this is, this is I like the high tensile wire. And then the gripple, using this gripple down here instead of a ratchet strainer, I think that's a good solution as well. Um, it's cheaper than a ratchet strainer, and it's just quicker and it's easier to use. I think this is definitely a good choice of a place to, that a gripple does a good job. So you can, you know, you can take that back apart and you can retighten it later if you want to. So I think that's a good choice there. And overall, I mean, you know, we got all four fence braces put in today. Um, so we got two stretches of wire. We got one from here up to the corner of the barnyard and then one from back here over that direction. And uh, we'll pretty much have a nice little area fenced in so the goats and stuff, and the chickens can come out here. Um, there is an opening for a gate, so we're going to put a 10-foot gate right here, and that's going to lead out to the pasture on this end. Of course, there's a gate on the barnyard that leads out to the pasture at that end. And, uh, yeah, so I think, uh, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to let these sit and hope, let the ground settle. We actually may get some rain in a couple days, maybe a half inch of rain, and I'm hoping that that helps kind of settle these posts in and just helps firm everything up. And I'll come back next weekend. I'll try to stretch these two fences, these two runs of wire um, so that the goats can use this area. I probably won't be able to get the, the gate in here. I'll probably just throw a stock panel in this spot. But uh, hopefully next weekend we'll have some fencing up and at least the goats and the chickens can come out here. So if you guys remember when we had the electric netting set up out here uh, for, the, uh, for the chickens and the goats, um, this area is going to be a little bit bigger than that and it'll be permanent at least so they can always be able to come out here. Uh, the electric netting I took down when I cut these trees down over here and then I haven't been able to get it back in the ground. The ground is so hard. So it'll be nice to finally get the uh, get the fencing up next week and finally get the you know the goats and the chickens back out here so they get them off the hay and back on some grass. So other things we got going on uh, around the homestead is uh, I measured the pigs the other day um, where you you measure around them and you measure kind of their length and it gives you an estimated weight. And uh, right now they're weighing about 160 pounds. And I've got, I think, almost two months left, almost exactly two months left before they get butchered. So uh, hopefully we can get another 100 pounds on them before then. And, uh, but they're doing good. They haven't been able to really root up their area um, as bad. I mean, they are kind of clear in the area. Definitely have not been able to root with as dry as it is. Um, so. I don't think they're cleaning out the area as good as I wanted them to. Um, but anyway, they're doing great. Uh, pigs are great to raise. They, they run around like a pair of dogs and, and run around in circles and they're funny to watch and to deal with. And um, the, uh, the goats, um, we're here, in a, oh, here in a few months here, probably November, October, November time frame. I think we're gonna start uh, moving our goats around and we're gonna pair up our females and males and uh, get them to breed. So this will be another reason why we'll want to have this pasture maybe fenced in because we might need to have to put a little shelter out here and then and this could be an area where we could separate some goats. And uh, what else is going on? Oh, I planted a fall garden the other day. Um, planted like 50 broccoli plants and planted some lettuce and uh, got some, I did end up ordering garlic. Uh, and hopefully I'll, that'll, that's supposed to have been shipped and hopefully I'll plant some garlic here soon. But um, rabbits got in the garden and pretty much about destroyed most of the broccoli plants. Uh, they didn't seem to touch the lettuce, but man, they pretty much destroyed the broccoli. Um, so that fencing I put on the garden is that uh, two by four welded wire fence and that does not, the, the rabbits can squeeze through that. So uh, probably next spring I'll end up Maybe put some hardware cloth on the bottom or something. Something to keep the rabbits out and keep them out of the garden. 
But uh, really disappointing that I went through all that trouble and then the uh, rabbits got the little baby plants. So Australian Shepherds, uh, Sydney and Scout back here, they are just at nine months old. So they're, they're still puppies. Uh, they're pretty much full size, but uh, they still want to chew on things. You've got to watch what you lay down. And uh, we've been working with them pretty hard over the last few weeks, trying to get them to behave and listen and uh, follow directions and everything. And uh, they've improved quite a bit. Um, Rebecca is wanting me to build a kennel for them and with a long run for them. So when we leave, that you know we can lock them up in that kennel and uh, give them their own little space separated from each other. And um, that may be something that's coming up uh, sometime soon, but wood prices are so expensive, I don't know if I want to tackle that job. But uh, definitely that's another thing on the uh, maybe future list is maybe building a dog kennel for these two guys. So recently I've had several people kind of reach out to me and ask me about YouTube and, and what I film with and how it's done and just kind of, you know, the ins and outs and everything. And one of the people that's, that reached out to me, um, he actually, you know, he decided to jump on the whole, you know, homesteading thing. And uh, they moved from New York, I think down to South Carolina. I'm, I maybe, don't quote me on that. But uh, they bought a house, a little bit of acreage, and, um, you know, they're just starting the whole homesteading thing. So he started a YouTube channel to kind of document his, his journey. And his name's Mike down at... Um, Hidden Creek Homestead. So check out Hidden Creek Homestead on YouTube. He's just starting out. So, um, you know, he's got goats. He's, he's got some chickens now. And I think he's got plans in the future. He's got, you know, to, to, to put in a garden and to do all the other homesteading stuff. So go out and follow him and you can kind of see how, you know, he takes a blank slate and kind of evolves that into uh, what he's got kind of dreamed up. So uh, I think... Uh, from what I understand, I think he's kind of like a home inspector, so I think he's a fairly handy guy and has a bunch of tools and stuff, so he'll, I'm sure he's going to have some interesting things on his channel once he kind of gets building some stuff. So anyway, uh, yeah, check out uh, Mike at Hidden Creek Homestead. But um, I think that's it for today, today's video, guys. I'm going to go ahead and put the tractor up, get the tools put up, and call it a day. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.